Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first visit, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm glad to see you've made it back to my channel. Um, so today is our weekly progress update. This is the video where I go over my completed projects for the week, um, things that I've started, things that I'm working on, things that I'm thinking about in terms of like what to do next. Um, lot to cover, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is a project that I started back 15 years ago. Um, so I've been, like I mentioned in other videos, I've been doing crochet since the 90s. And um, I was cleaning out one of my storage rooms and I came across a project that I worked on about 15 years ago. And I was in a very different place in terms of crochet. Um, there's a lot of things that I know now that I didn't know back then. Um, and so I came across this project and I'm not exactly sure what to do with it. I don't know if I should take it apart and fix it, if I should just leave it and use it as like a memento. Um, leave me a comment and let me know what you think I should do. This is the blanket here, or this is the project. Let me back up so you can see the full effect of the situation. So this is a project that I worked on um, 15 years ago. This is all Bernat Super Value uh, in the colorway white, taupe, heather gray, and black. Um, yeah, this is all single crochet. Um, I love it. I'm not going to lie to you. I love it. But here's my dilemma. It's the back. The back is my dilemma. So I didn't know how to join blocks back then. So I did what I thought was the right thing, which was I sandwiched them together and I stitched along the side. I didn't know that connecting the squares across the top was even a thing. Um, I should have, but 15 years ago, technology isn't, or it wasn't what it is today. So um, let me get, closer and show you just what the heck I'm talking about here. So I literally sandwiched it like this and I stitched it on the side, just like this. And I swore up and down that this was the way that it was supposed to go. I just knew I was doing everything right. Um, so yeah, that's the dilemma that I'm facing because now I have projects in the other room, which I am going to feature on future videos, where I've joined and you can't see the join. They're called uh, invisible joins. I know how to do that now. See, 15 years ago, a much younger one, um, much greener one, didn't know how to do that. Back then, 15 years ago, the yarn that I had in, in my house was probably just this. I didn't have, like... I'm nothing compared to how I was before. So anyway, what do you guys think I should do? Should I take it apart and fix it? Should I leave it alone and add to it um, and just continue on? Do I just put a border on it and call it a day and, you know, clean up my ends? What do you guys think? See, here's the full visual of the back. So, I mean, I don't know. Every time I look at it, I'm like, I want to throw it on a chair. I want to do something with it because I love the concept that I had 15 years ago. The thought in my head, um, I mean, the design was there. It was exactly what I had in my head, but I just didn't think about the execution the right way. So, please Tell me what you guys think. I'm open to suggestions. Um, I haven't really committed to what I'm doing yet with this because this has a sentimental value um, to me because it is 15 years old. Um, it's not the oldest project that I have. Uh, I still have projects, completed projects from the 90s um, in my possession, which I, I will share with you guys in future videos. But this one, I'm like, what do I do with it? I I don't know. So again, just leave me um, a comment and tell me what you think. Okay. So the next one that I want to share with you guys, um, it's a wearable. So 
I've learned how to make sweaters and all the things. So I am going to show you um, a hooded sweater and a scarf combination. So for those of you who don't know, um, I had some health issues uh, over the last couple of years and um, I'm a type 2 diabetic and I have heart issues. Um, long story short, I wound up gaining so much weight. I was at my heaviest, I was 437 pounds. Um, and I think that was during the pandemic. I just had major heart issues, breathing issues, diabetes, hypertension. I just was in a very bad place health wise. And so again, crochet was an escape for me. Without being long winded, the point that I'm making is the sweater that I made um, was too small for me when I first made it. So that's the point that I'm trying to make here. Nonetheless, I'm still gonna finish it because I'm sure there's some special person out there that can fit this. And that person no longer is me. But I know plenty of people who would want this. And so without further ado, um, this is this is my project. But, but before I open it all up, this here is a stitch marker for me. I have plans on putting buttons. This is a work in progress. I bought buttons. Don't ask me why I bought buttons with all these shades. Cause now I have like, I found the button, but now the buttons have different shades. Do we go with an ebony? Do we go with a hazelnut? I mean, there's all the shades. So light, medium, dark, drop it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Um, again, I'm not committed because it's no longer for me. This is going to be somebody's gift. Um, somebody that can fit into this. Um, I am not taking it apart. I'm not tossing it in the trash. I want this to go to someone who would really cherish and appreciate this because um, this project here took 16 balls to complete. I took two strands at once and made this. So it's super heavy and it's super big and it's meant to keep a big person warm. And as a former big person, the one thing that I got extremely upset about was how things fit when I was bigger. And I said to myself, well, I can't find something that fits me the way that I want it to fit. Well, I'm going to make something. And I was still learning, but long story short, I did it. Okay. So I am going to put this on. Okay. Okay. All right, let me stand up. Okay. So this, this is, move chair. Jesus. I'm talking to inanimate objects. I mean, at first glance, it's baggy. It looks nice. But when I first made this, it was it was too small. I couldn't close it. And now it's it's still not it's not the right size for me because if I go to put the buttons on it, there's just so much here that you know it's too big. It's not. It looks nice though. Anyway, I used front post stitches here to make my cuffs and the ribbing. And again, this is a stitch marker. I plan on putting buttons all up the side once I figure out what shade. There's the hood. No pockets. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, listen, I was debating because pockets, it pulls down. I don't know. So I chose not to do, um, pockets, but 
This is the man scarf that comes with it. I call it a man scarf because, I mean, <laughs> it's nine and a half feet long. I'm six and a half feet tall. This goes beyond the ceiling. Like I can go up to the ceiling, look, and it's hanging over and it's still touching the floor. So anyway, um, an oversized scarf. I'm more of a triangle scarf person. Okay, that's not gonna work. Let's do this situation here. <laughs> this really needs buttons. And I think if my next one, when I do make my next one, it needs to come up to here and it needs to be, I wanna say about, I don't know. It needs to be about eight inches shorter on each side. See? And I still have room. So it... Anyway, this is a work in progress. This sweater is. This isn't. But whoever gets this sweater will also get this. Because I made it with the same uh, yarn. And I put the black on just as like an accent. So anyway... I am very proud of this, and I hope it goes to someone special that would appreciate this once I get buttons put on it. Um, okay, so that was a work in progress. Where can I put this? I'll put this here. Don't mind this. These are future videos. Um, <laughs> organizing my thoughts, so to speak. So that's what that is. Um, all my future yarn haul videos are there. Okay, so what's next, Juan? Okay, so project update. I uh, am like, I got this project idea from Bag of Day Crochet Crystal. She, that's the name of her channel, Bag of Day Crochet. She did, um, if you look up the video on YouTube, it's called Opera Throw. Just type Opera Throw Crochet Blanket and you'll see this, but in red. Um, I got the inspiration from her video. Um, it's not exact. Obviously, I chose the navy blue because this colorway speaks better to me than the red that she chose. Um, but the stitch that she used was a bobble stitch, single crochet, bobble stitch, back and, you know, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, on the first row, and then the next row, all single crochets. And that was basically her blanket. But I chose the bean stitch because... When you go in and out, in and out of your stitch, because of how I crochet, that third time going into the stitch to pull it out to make the bobble stitch, it was too loose. It just didn't look right. So with the with the bean stitch, you're wrapping around initially um, and going in twice instead of three times. And so this is single crochet and the, the bean stitch. So it has like a little bump it's that's the texture it's not as raised as the bobble stitch um but yeah and then the back the back is flat so you have a good side or they're both good sides but you have a front and a back this is the back and this is the front and so all with the, with the exception of the bean stitch, this whole thing is single crochet and I am making it for my king size bed. And um, she, took it for hers, it was just a throw and it took seven and a half, I think. I have 14. My math tells me that I need 14 of these to finish this project. Um, and here is the ball here. It's Super Saver Jumbo Speckle, and it's a four-weight yarn. They call for an I-9. I'm using a J-needle. Um, just, again, I have big hands. I'm six and a half feet tall. I prefer bigger needles. I use the little ones for, like, amigurumi. I'm sure I butchered that word. But, I, you know, I'm trying um, new projects with smaller needles just so that I can get better. I'm pushing out my comfort zone. So, anyway, um, this... One ball is 482 yards. I have 14 of these before I'm finished. And I'm also going to be bordering it with like a bright white. So 
yeah this is an update now the last time i featured this on my videos on youtube i think i was only like five rows in so i had just about that much completed in between my fingers there so i've gone a ways here now mind you i do this in between a million other things um just because i am a content creator and i have to have things to show so i can't just be showing this oh this week i spent all week and this is how far i got that's boring so i create things to show you things and so there's that okay so i have what's called a cringe project i think it's cringe Okay, so my mom wanted me to go to Joann's and pick her up some mistletoe yarn. So for those of you who are not aware of what mistletoe yarn is, it is, do I have any in the house here? No, it's in the other yarn room, the next room over, I'm not getting up. Um, it's green, white, and red variegated yarn, and it is used for projects for Christmas. Um, Anyway, she finished her project. She had three skeins left and she's like, Juan, please do something with this, um, make something. So I did. And here is the finished project. So I made a hat and it's a, a beanie hat. I have a big head, so I made a big beanie. I'm gonna put it on in a minute. So, um, this much here of the hat is double crochet and then half double and then single. And I did that because the part that goes around your ear, um, it's, if you do it like this, it holds your ears in and it, your ears, yeah, I have a complex about these ears of mine because as a kid, I had a small head and huge ears. And now that I'm older, I have a big head and just these ears that, you know, they stick out. So... When I put on the beanie here, it holds it in. See that? The single crochet holds in my ears and it holds the hat in place. And so, yeah, that is my mistletoe beanie. And with that, I have a triangle scarf. Um, it's not an outside scarf. It's just an accent thing. You know, when you're celebrating the holidays a friend of mine was like why are you putting that bib on <laughs> i can see it's giving bib realness but um no it's only worn this i'm only gonna wear this during the christmas holidays um so yeah this is the mistletoe beanie and scarf and yeah so just to get through this i did a double crochet chain one double crochet um, I do have a written pattern for this for those who are interested um, this took two skeins to complete um, so yeah there's this one and the next thing I have to show you is my puzzle uh, beanie so I did a puzzle beanie um, and a puzzle triangle scarf so one thing that you will learn about me when i get inspired i try to do all the things within that particular situation so um here's a skein of puzzle yarn so this is a skein of puzzle yarn i featured this on one of my other videos but i have all of the colorways of puzzles see once i enjoy something i need all of it so um puzzle the puzzle line comes with i believe 13 different colorways i have all of them so um yeah i featured a beanie and a triangle scarf with this this is called backgammon um it is a bulky five weight yarn and it is uh it comes with 328 yards so there's a lot like i can do a hat and half of a triangle scarf with one but with another one i can complete both so two Two of these will give you a beanie hat and a triangle scarf. And so, yeah, anyway, I am trying to find the leftover skein. Sorry, guys. I hate to turn away from the camera. I have all the things everywhere here. Um, nope. 
one does not have the colorway of the project that I am about to show you. I'll put it in the comments. Anyway, this is Puzzle Yarn in another colorway. I can't for the life of me remember the name of it. Um, but for this one, I featured, not featured, but I did extra rows of single crochet to just enhance holding my head together. Um, and I did not do a triangle scarf. I did a regular scarf. So let's try it on and show you the things. So maybe I can get away with, no, it's fine. Just the way it is one. Okay. And here's the scarf. Isn't that nice? I did not change the color. I just let the ball do the talking. I just went from beginning to end. And this is, this is what it gave me. Um, so this is exactly my height, six and a half feet long. And I used a J hook. Um, and this took three, well, this took two skeins to complete as well. So there you have it. I wish I knew the name. I'm kicking myself in the face right now because I said to myself, when I do the video today, I want to make sure that I have this. I apologize. I don't have it. I'm unpre unprepared, but I will put the colorway in the comments once I f figure out the name of it. Um, I do have extras because like I said, I have all the colors. Um, the reason why I like this is because one, it's a bulky five two. Um, I can get more done with less, so I don't need as much yardage because of how thick the yarn is. Um, and also two winter is coming thicker yarns mean, uh, warmth. So there's that. And that was the hat that went with it. And for this one here, I did half double crochets the whole way down. Okay, so the very first part here, this is double crochet. And then all of this here is half double. And then all of this is single crochet. I'm gonna get closer so I can show you what this looks like. It's very, 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 very tight. I can almost, look. <laughs> it's stiff. It's giving Aragurumi vibes. But anyway, look at how tight that is. It's very tight. And with the as cold as our winters get in the Northeast, um, you need tight. Okay. So the next thing that I completed was this. This is a lot to look at, but what I did was I ordered this particular yarn from Ice Yarns um, out of Turkey, the country Turkey, and I paid 37 cents a skein. And the skeins um, are literally this big. And I have some to show you in future videos, but um, this took eight skeins to complete. And this is a triangle scarf. So it's pretty big. Made for a big person who doesn't just like your standard scarves. See, I like to wear scarves inside without a jacket or a coat in the wintertime. So I want to stay warm still. And these will help me do that. Um, it is unisex. So... You know, females who like what they see, they can flip this on their back and wear it as like a shawl. For guys, we can just, you know, uh, and girls too, doesn't matter. He, she, they, them, doesn't matter, anybody. Um, you know, just, there you go. This is, this is the look. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot to look at, but with a dark shirt or a solid shirt of any color that complements the blue and the yellow, it's pretty amazing. 
And I will tell you, it's very, very uh, stiff. It's not soft, it's stiff. Um, and for those of you who like that, go for it. See, I like, um, I do like stiff uh, yarns because it gives it structure. So like for those yarns that give the drape, there's a, a likelihood of it going flat. But when you have a stiff piece, you can set it like this and it will stay like this. It won't go flat, it, you know, it, it stays. So that's kind of why I choose some of the stiffer yarns when I create um, things like this because I'm thinking, okay, am I wearing this outside? Am I wearing it inside? Can it be versatile? Like, what are we doing? So I chose this particular yarn for this project to be versatile, to be able to wear inside or outside. I don't think that this is a January, February type scarf to be able to like just go outside in a coat in because again, there's holes, it's stiff, it's not really thick. Um, I would go with, you know, one of my other uh, triangle scarfs or shawl uh, situations. But anyway, like for this, this is definitely an inside situation. Um, I'm inside, there's, it, it, there's a chill in the air, I got this on and that's my gig. So, I gotta come up with a name for this. I was thinking Copacabana, but um, that's definitely not it. I just remember the name of the place, Copacabana, it was yellow and blue. First thing that came to mind. Okay, and finally, I haven't cut this off yet, but it is completed. Um, just a solid beanie hat. Now these I'm actually making in large quantities. Um, it takes me about 20 minutes to make this. Um, and I'm making a lot of these in different sizes. And what I'm doing is, and I've done this a couple years running so far, is I make a whole bunch of these and I give them out during the winter months. Um, in downtown uh, Wilmington, downtown Philly. Um, I give them out because it's cold and there's lots of people that need something warm. And, you know, I buy these yarns cheap. Like I look for the sale, I buy in mass and I make these. So, um, yeah, just giving you a heads up with that. And so I'm gonna be giving these out. Um, so yeah, here's this. Yep. So there's that. And so I'm just going to cut it off and move on. Um, and just keep making these. If there's any places that you know of that could benefit from having hats and scarves and blankets and things, drop a comment, send me an email, um, and I'll see what I can do. My email is hookcreations123 at gmail.com. I love to help as much as I can, especially, you know, during the winter months, things and things that we can do to help people stay warm. Um, so that's all I have. Um, thank you for sticking by. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you uh, want updates on future videos and tutorials. Um, I look forward to uh, having you guys back again. And so until the next time, have a good one.